Okay, welcome to today's video where we're gonna finally finish the Ego battery pack powered T12 soldering station. Yeah, I don't really have a good name for it. So the whole thing with this video is we took one of those KSGER T12 soldering stations you get from China, they're like, you know, 50 bucks. Uh, I took the AC to DC power supply out, made my own DC to DC power supply. It's uh, 56 volts in, 24 volts out to run it. It's got a low voltage cutoff on there so we don't damage the battery pack. And uh, that's about it. It's a pretty simple circuit. We just have to do the mechanical work. So I've already done the videos on the circuit board. So you can uh, check the link in the description if you want to see those. But today it's really just buttoning up this project, getting it done and uh, ending this series. I wanted to do a little bit more with these Ego battery packs. However, I'll probably revisit them in the future instead of trying to focus in on that right now. Uh, I have a lot of other content I'm interested in getting up on YouTube. So uh, yeah, let's uh, get this wrapped up and uh, get right into the build. I'm just gonna start drilling and uh, mounting everything now. Okay, also what I've done so far is I just went ahead and drilled some little holes in here. So let's go ahead and get that done. So yeah, we definitely have uh, plenty of clearance between the board and the screw. Um, so happy with that. This one's a little bit crooked, so I'll try to straighten it out. I think I accidentally used one of the longer screws, but it looks like, looks like I have clearance with either one that I use. Yeah, I have a lot of clearance there. So battery packs now mounted. It's uh, weird that they put the holes in there, but didn't actually drill all the way through with the plastic. So I had to drill those. And th these are just number two screws with the, the uh, nut that goes along with that. So now we can put the uh, face plate back on. I just, I mostly just took it off to make sure I didn't get metal shavings uh, inside it. Okay, base plates back on. Uh, so these are the two different back plates that uh, I worked on. This was the first uh, try. I, w I decided I wanted to put a switch on it so that way I can turn it off even while it's on the battery pack. Um, so I ended up with this. This gauge is way overkill for this application. We're, we're not gonna be pulling that much current through it. Uh, but, you know, that's what came on here and this doesn't come apart or else I'd probably have just taken it apart to uh, put a smaller gauge wire on it. But um, it's what we have to work with, so we'll work with it. It's gonna probably look a little how you doing uh, soldered on there. The other thing is uh, I really should have had the uh, negative over here and the positive over here um, but that would have required kind of moving the EMI section a little bit on the board so it looks like that's why I put the positive there um, but having the switch and then I'm gonna have to route the wire back around but it's again not a big deal uh, it'll be much easier to route it because I'll use a smaller gauge wire routing back to the switch okay let's start this on here but first I want to put a piece of bus wire here across the switch. All right, now we can uh, 
strip the rest of these wires and get them wired up. So this guy's going to route underneath and come back up there. So about like that should give us enough length. Okay, sorry about that. Off camera, I had to splice, uh, I had to go down a gauge, so uh, I had to put 16 gauge on here just to get it to uh, fit. And you know, nobody wants their butt splice judged on camera, so. No, it's just hard to maneuver with the uh, tripod sitting there, so stopped recording for a second so I could put the butt splice on. All right, and then let's make sure we don't get the polarity wrong here. All right, positives there. And then the screws for the back plate. Okay, so that should be about it. It should work now. Um, just like the original design, you gotta reach behind it to turn it off. So I guess uh, we kept to that tradition of making these things not very uh, ergonomic. Um, but yeah, I mean, to me, this uh, doesn't look too bad. I mean, it'd be nice to have this 56 volts like in some uh, alligator skin as, uh, or snake skin. Okay, well, moment of truth. Let's uh, find out if this thing still works. So we got it plugged in and now it is on and look at that, it's booting up. So uh, yeah, uh, obviously uh, I don't have a soldering tip plugged in. So let's uh, find one of those and make sure it will run with one. That Metcal stand doesn't fit them very good. Okay, and there we go. It is running. We got a working soldering station here. Look at that. So now we have the power of a uh, full-on solder station on the go. So was this project necessary? Not really. You could have just bought one of these TS100 or TS80 uh, style soldering stations that plug into the power bricks, but also have the uh, LiPo battery adapter that you can just plug in and have like an off the shelf working solution. So do I think that I needed to do this project? No. Did I want to do it for fun? Yes. I, I wanted to uh, practice making a DC to DC controller that was switch mode. Um, and so I just wanted to take this, uh, uh, 56 volts bucket down to the 24 volts that was necessary to run this, make a stable power supply that wasn't oscillating. And so uh, I, I kind of got, got to go through that with this project. So I think this project was worth the time and learning that I got out of it. I was glad to find uh, this, uh, the battery adapter already for sale that I uh, didn't have to make it myself. I was wishing that it had the two other slots in it so that way I could get the data and temperature from it, from the pack. Yeah, this power supply, I, I left a lot of blank space on here like this. There was supposed to be a second iteration of this. I was, 
I was going to put a microcontroller on here so that way I could try to talk to the battery, get the data from the BMS in there, uh, and also uh, get monitor the temperature so that way if for some reason the battery pack was getting hot, I could uh, turn off the enable to this chip so that way it would quit running. So I, I was planning on doing more with it, um, but I was having a hard time finding uh, the one of these that actually had all four slots populated. Uh, I didn't want to go through the process of 3D printing them. I found some um, models already made where I could 3D print it, but then I was going to have to figure out how to do these little slots and put the little slots of metal in there and all that. And I just, I didn't want to mess with all that. I found this and was like, ah, I'll just get it and I'll be done with it. And uh, so here we are with, uh, you know, it's a working solder station on the go. And uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, kind of a bulky battery to use but it's also, it sits on there nicely. It, it's not something you'd want to take in your backpack, but it's something you can put in the back of your truck, uh, especially for these guys that do the mobile instrument cluster repairs uh, and all of that. Something like this uh, might actually serve you a little bit better. The next improvement that we would really want to see on this is a better handle, because really to make this project worth being what it is, is uh, to get away from that that really far tip to grip that you get with the uh, TS100 style things. That's what I really don't like about the TS100s is you your hand is actually very far up the solder station holding here. here instead of like here. So uh, it's it's much harder to work with those TS100 style uh, soldering stations. You know I'm I'm pretty spoiled with my uh, JBC here where the tip to grip is like I'm almost touching the circuit board that I'm soldering on here I, I'm happy with it. I think this is the conclusion of the project uh, I, de I do have some extra boards here So if anybody wants to reproduce this project, let me know if, if you're interested uh, I could send you some of the boards and I could uh, send you a 3d print to go along with it um, so that way, all's what you'd have to do is get on eBay and uh, buy one of these. I, I think I have um, four or five of these uh, boards left. So, um, yeah, just uh, let me know down in the comments. Uh, and, uh, okay, well, uh, that was a successful build. I mean, I definitely had been planning on doing more with this board, as I mentioned, uh, but just never really got around to it. And part of the limit was not having the tabs to actually communicate with the battery. Uh, if, if I had found a just as cheap of a connector that had it, I, I may have revisited. One of the other things I would have liked better is for this uh, to have the flanges that lock in. But again, for what they cost on eBay and the time it saved me, I'm not going to complain too much. So uh, I'm happy with the way this project came out. I'm probably done with it. Maybe we'll revisit it in the future, but I kind of doubt it. Other than if I'm out doing some mobile work, you'll probably see me use it. Um, for our next repair video, I think I will be fixing this uh, Tektronix uh, diff probe. Uh, just had a wire ripped off of it. Other than that, it seems to work, but uh, we'll uh, get into it and figure that out in that video. The next video coming out should be the Carvana follow-up video. That car gets delivered here in two days. So I should have that car on Monday and then I can hopefully finish up that series. Definitely uh, still a thumbs down on customer service. Uh, if you so. want to know what I'm talking about there, see my last video uh, on uh, on it. I did do a review of my experience with Carvana. Definitely not a positive review. And as of today, still not a positive review there. Uh, well, I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in the next one.